In this lecture, I'm going to talk about a peculiar problem you may face when you're solving the energy equation for head losses. Um, let's say we have flow down this pipe of a certain diameter and length and material, and you know the pressure coming into it, and you want to find the flow rate through that pipe. Okay, you all know how to proceed with this. This is um, conservation of energy. We pick two control surfaces or two Bernoulli points. We write the energy equation. Um, because we have a pipe of constant diameter, the velocity, the flow rates have to be the same, so the velocities have to be the same. The elevations are the same, they cancel out. There's no pump, so that cancels out. Pressure in a free jet is zero, so that drops out. So we're left with a pretty simple equation. P1 over gamma equals the head loss. And I'm going to substitute in the darcy weisbeck equation for head loss. OK, so this is all what we've learned already. The next step, so we know pressure, we know gamma, we know length, we don't know velocity, we're kind of solving for that, right? We know diameter, we know g. Um, so let's find our friction factor. We do that using the Moody diagram with the relative roughness and the Reynolds number. But here's the problem. How do we calculate the Reynolds number without a velocity? And without the Reynolds number, then how in the world can we get the friction factor off the Moody diagram? So this is a stopping point here because you can't really use the Moody diagram in reverse or you can't really solve through it as an equation. So this is a problem that we encounter when we're solving for velocity, flow rate, or diameter and we need to solve this iteratively. Now keep in mind at this point that um, this is not some like tricky little problem that I came up with. This is this is the more common problem you're gonna solve as engineers. You know, our our job is to design stuff. So if someone gives you a says you have to transmit water from here to here, what size pipe do I use? That's a very reasonable question for an engineer to face. How do you find the proper diameter of pipe to use? And and this is one of those times where this where you have to solve this iteratively. So this is a difficult problem. Um, there's different ways to do this. Let's go through one way. So I'm going to start with that energy equation and I'm going to solve it as best I can. I'm going to get it in terms of velocity, plug in all the numbers I know. Um, I still have two unknowns in one equation, but I'm going to get it down to the simplest form I can. So this is one equation I'm going to work with. There's two others. There's the Reynolds e number equation. And again, I don't know everything in it, but I'm going to simplify it as best I can. So that's my second equation. And then the third equation is relative roughness. And in this case, we can solve for that directly. Note that if we were solving for diameter, we'd have these three equations, and even relative roughness would be unknown. Okay, so I'm going to use those three equations and solve this iteratively. In this case, we know relative roughness, so we can um, pick a type curve and stick with it. Um, now, what the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start by assuming an F value. And I like starting there because I can look at the Moody diagram and it gives me a range that I can choose from. And I just picked a number kind of in the middle, 0.02. Um, using the first equation, I can then solve for the velocity in the pipe with that f. I can then use that velocity and calculate a, calculate a Reynolds number. And then I can take that Reynolds number and go to the Moody diagram and come up with a, an f. Now you'll see that f that I get using the Moody diagram is different than the one I assumed. So I didn't make a good assumption. I'm getting a different number than what I started with, so I have to keep going. So I now have a loop that I can repeat. I'm going to take that F, calculate a velocity, calculate a Reynolds number, and now when I go back to the Moody diagram, I really can't tell the difference between 1.5 and 1.7 on the Moody diagram. Um, and I get back the same F that I started from now, so I have converged and um, I can use that velocity of 12.1 feet per second and calculate a flow rate based on it. So that's the basic method. 
Anytime you're faced with this problem of solving for velocity, flow rate, or diameter, you set up the three equations, the energy equation, the Reynolds number equation, and the relative roughness. Plug in all the numbers that you know and get it in its simplest form. Then you have to guess an unknown. I like to use F, but sometimes you can't, so um, you have to be flexible here. And then somehow you've got to you've got to come up with a iterative or repeating procedure to um, solve for the unknown with those three equations, and make sure you check it on the Moody diagram. And if your check matches what your assumption was, then you're good. If it doesn't, then you got to keep going. Let's look at a more difficult one. Um, we have flow between two reservoirs at the same elevation. Um, it's traveling through 1.5 kilometers of steel pipe at a flow rate of 1 meter cube per second, and there's a pump that's driving the flow. The question is determine the diameter of the pipe. Again, I'm going to use the energy equation, control surfaces, surface of tanks are good because pressure and velocity is zero. In this case, elevations are also zero, and we're left with the pump head equals the head loss. We put in the different equations for pump head and for head loss. For head loss, we have both major and minor losses in this problem. Um, now, we're solving for flow rate, and the energy equation there has velocity in it. So I want to get rid of all those velocity terms just so I can solve for one unknown. So flow rate equals velocity times area. I'm going to rearrange and get it in terms of diameter and then substitute that in. So I get rid of all my velocities. Now I have everything in terms of Q. <clears throat> I can plug in all the numbers that I know. Um, so we know we have information about the head and the, uh, about the pump and the efficiency of the pump, length of pipe, flow rate, um, the minor head losses, there are two minor head losses. There's an entrance and an exit that have coefficients of 0.5 and 1. And we can then reduce that and simplify, and we end up with this equation. I'm going to take it one more step and solve for F. Um, notice in this form of the energy equation, it, it wouldn't be useful to guess an F, right? Because then you have to solve for D, and that's, that's kind of a nightmare. Okay, next equation, I'm going to, I need a relative roughness equation, can't do anything more than that. And then Reynolds number, I need a Reynolds number equation, I'm going to set it up in terms of Q instead of V. And plug in the numbers that I know, and then that's the best I can do to simplify it. Um, Okay, so those are our three equations, the energy equation, the relative roughness, and the Reynolds number. Now I'm going to take those three equations and solve them iteratively. I'm going to start by guessing a D. I, I said before that guessing an F wouldn't make any sense, so let's guess a D. And then I'm going to solve for F using the energy equation. I'm going to go to the Moody diagram, and it turns, off, it turns out it's off the chart. <laughs> so that was a stupid guess. So I'm going to pick something smaller, calculate f, and I get a negative f, which is also off the chart. So that was also an equally stupid guess. But I've now bounded my answer. I was too high and I was too low. So I know my answer is somewhere between 0.5 and 2. And I'm going to use this bracketing approach. Um, so I'm going to pick something in the middle, one foot. I calculate f using the energy equation, and that's a reasonable number. I then can calculate a relative roughness that gives me a, and I can also calculate a Reynolds number. I can um, take that type curve and the Reynolds number and off the Moody diagram that gives me an F of 0 0.0125. Okay, so that does not check with my calculated F. So this is not a good guess, but I'm getting closer. Now I'm not really sure what to do. I decided to go lower. That was kind of arbitrary, though. So if I choose 0.9, that gives me a much smaller F. I can get relative roughness and Reynolds number, and then go to the Moody diagram. And off the Moody diagram, I get 
a very similar f to before. So I can tell now from those last two guesses that 1 was too high and 0.9 was too low. So I'm between 0.9 and 1, so now I'm getting pretty close. And again, this is another approach you can take, this kind of bracketing approach. So I'm going to pick a number sort of in the middle, 0.96. That gives me this f and a relative roughness of this and a Reynolds number of that. And then off of the Moody diagram, I get an f that's a pretty close match. And I'm going to stop right there, say that's close enough. And um, so my answer is D, the pipe needs to be 0.96 feet. Okay, so just to summarize, in this procedure, I used a bracketing approach where I just kept guessing and high, low, middle, and then somewhere between those two, somewhere between those two, somewhere between those two until I approached a, a value. Um, the F's were calculated using the energy equation. The roughnesses were calculated using the relative roughness equation. The Reynolds number was calculated using the Reynolds number equation. And then I have to have my check. I, then I ended up getting F off the Moody diagram. And those are the necessary steps to do this. And these were two different methods I showed you, but you can come up with your own method um, depending on what you face.